I have with me John Connell, who has been in the battery industry with Crown for 27 years. He's written more than a dozen magazine articles and been featured on ABC News. And right now, John is going to be breaking down lithium batteries, what you need to know. The obvious, the hidden cost, the risks, including the ones that aren't being mentioned, and then some of the benefits and applications of it. So with me right now is John Connell. Let's give a big round of applause. Thank you. Good to be with everyone today. You know, I'm here to talk with you about a very important issue trending in our business, and that's the uh, evolution of lead and lead ba lithium batteries in material handling applications. And it's important before starting this app, this discussion, to consider where we've come from as an industry over the last 10 years. We've seen um, quite a few different technologies enter the space of electric material handling. Many of you can name them. If you recall, we've seen fuel cell technology. We've seen AGM technology. We've seen quite a few different storage mediums come into the battery space in electric material handling. And lithium is the latest technology to challenge the position of lead as the material handling go-to power source. Now, Crown Battery is quite open in stating that we believe lithium has a strong position in the world of material handling. But our mission today is to educate you about the benefits, the risks, and the potential costs involved with going lithium in a material handling application. Now, in looking at lithium, there are a number of benefits that are really quite impressive. It's been around for a relatively short period of time but the battery is the clear winner for energy and space and for density. The product brings a number of, of clear benefits in terms of weight and the ease of putting it into the application, but it does require some add-ons. It requires BMS, and energy density can be an issue if it gets away from you, particularly at the end of discharge. Now, it's important to consider ROI when considering lithium versus lead. Because when it's done the right way, the adder over a present day lead battery is approximately three times what you're running with conventional lead battery cost. And that's a significant upcharge. And when you consider what's happening with current and future pricing, it's very important that you understand whether you can get the cost out of lithium in the way of value or benefits delivered to your operation. It's also important that you really consider the hidden costs of what you're using presently. Okay, lead batteries happen to be the most established, the most proven, and without question, the safest power application for electric material handling. And in looking at it, the question is, what is the hidden cost of it? And the fact is, it's nothing. Okay, the technology is proven, it's understood, and the costs involved with it are really limited to your upfront setup costs and putting the maintenance and labor in place to take care of the batteries over the life of the product. There's nothing hidden. But with lithium, if you're going to take a hard look at benefits, you have to look at some of the risks. And in terms of risk, you've got a number of hidden costs that you have to work hard to validate with your supplier. For example, just in looking what I have here, there are a number of facility adoption and uh, integration costs that you really have to consider. For example, do you have the fire suppression in place to handle a lithium fire? Have you validated that your insurance carrier will actually support the lithium product used in your application environment? Have you had a formal risk assessment done, performed at your facility, either by insurance or your local fire district, to make sure that you've covered all of the angles involved with taking your fleet from lead to lithium? These are important considerations when asking whether lithium is right for you. The other points that are important to consider are just training requirements. The 
chemistry and the application of lead batteries in a lift truck fleet is very, very well understood. But there is training involved with alternative technologies like lithium, and it's important that you get a commitment from your supplier prior to making an investment to ensure they're going to come in and, and make you productive with this technology. Because again, at three times, four times the cost of present-day lead battery systems, it's a very, very important point to hit the ground running. You also have to make sure you eliminate uncertainty with warranty and after sales support. You know, it's a fact with many of the lithium battery technologies in this room, you'll see suppliers making some pretty outrageous claims about life and about what you can expect for your return on investment. Just this morning, I visited with a supplier who was making a claim of 3,000 cycles, double the life of a product like Crown Battery's industrial product. But yet, they don't have the data to support it. And moreover, they, they don't offer a warranty that matches 3,000 cycles. In fact, their warranty is only like two years. Okay, the question we're asking is, if it's a 3,000 cycle battery, why aren't they offering a warranty to match that? And it's a question you have to ask to make sure that you're getting the support you need. The warranty in the end is only as good as the company that's backing it up. Now, I'm going to just restate, Crown Battery believes lithium has a very strong place in our industry. We are featuring it here at Promat. And we believe there are a number of applications where there's no tolerance for anything but a sealed battery that lithium will perform pretty well. Crown Battery is committed to standing behind our lithium product with a warranty that's real. And I would challenge you, if you're considering a move to lithium, that you validate that with your supplier, that they're going to stand behind it, and that you have a firm guarantee. The other thing we strongly encourage our clients to do is to ask some important questions. Due diligence has to be part of your move away from a lead battery fleet to lithium batteries. And some questions we're, we're stating here are really quite simple. How long have the batteries you're promoting been used in the field? Okay. Do you have any kind of documentation that I can share with my insurance carrier to ensure that they understand the risk involved with moving lithium into this application? Do you have any customers I could talk to? Okay, these are some questions that we feel it's important to ask. And it's really important to ask questions about whether the technology is safe. This is a scenario where you, you have to assume a buyer beware uh, position is critical. You have to be aware of the risks involved with moving away from a proven standard for safety in a lead battery to lithium because there are most definitely risks involved with it. Some of the risks that we've found are not limited to hoverboards and dreamliners. Okay, there's a real risk involved with fire. There's a real risk involved with toxic gases in the event of a fire. Okay. It's important to get buy-in from your local fire department when considering the risks. Because in many cases, fire departments, such as in this case, either don't have the resources or the training to put out a lithium fire. Above all, buyer beware. This is something that is probably the most important consideration from Crown Battery's point of view. We will not substitute our judgment for yours as the customer when taking the product to market. You have to be the one to make that decision. I'm certainly available for any questions. If you have had your badge scanned, we will be quite happy to email a copy of this presentation to you. Please feel free to fire away. Five years from now, what share will lithium have in the traction battery market in North America? So the question is, in five years' time, what do we anticipate the share of market for lithium suppliers to consist of in the material handling industry? It's anyone's guess. Today they occupy less than 10% of the material handling world. Um, 
there are some pretty aggressive estimates of opportunity. It really comes down to what battery buyers need. And we'll be here to serve it. But I'm not, today we're not in a position to really estimate that. Well, I want to thank everyone for your attention. I welcome you to come see me if um, you prefer some one-on-one. -on -one. And once again, if you would like a copy of the presentation made today, please have your badge scanned, and we'll, uh, we'll send it to you after the show. Okay, everybody, let's give a round of applause for John Connell. And we do have some more presentations today and also tomorrow, so feel free to stop again by our booth soon. Thank you.